give all yes, kids, Lord God. God. Thank you. We pray, Lord, everything, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you just come into this place right now, Lord God. Lord, move like never before, Lord God. Lord, touch hearts and minds of your people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, just have your way, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, Lord. Touch the, touch the praise team, oh God, and touch the speaker on today, oh God. Let everything be for your glory, oh God. It's not us, Lord, but it's you, oh God. But then it's oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
she was a great woman. That means she was an older woman. So that means that, you know, she had lived a good portion of her life and her and her husband, they, you know, had what they had and they were content. They were like, okay, you know, but there was something about this man of God she kept saying. It was like, let me make room for him. You know, let, let me see if he come in here and see something different. <laughs> Be careful what chance she gave him rest. And she set a time for him, and she was rewarded with a promise from God that was delivered through his messenger, Elisha. And the promise was that she was going to have a son. And she evaluated the situation, and she was like, mm, No, I don't think so. Because <laughs> it says it in the scripture. I mean, she didn't say exactly that, but said, no, I'm a great woman. No, I'm just going to throw age out there. No, this is not super old, but 50. She's, you know, 50 and probably like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. And she threw, you know, she's like, I'm 50. I can't have no kids. Right. What is this man talking about? She was like, oh, he must be deranged and crazy. And, you know, when, when I thought he was a man of God. Now he got up in my house lying like this. You know, that's what she did. And I had to go back and think to myself when God of being an evangelist, I was 19 years old. I can remember the day, the time, everything that happened. I was 19 years old, and I was got out of the church and was in a backslide state, and I came into the church, one of the mothers was like, get it right, baby, get it right. So I went up to the, to the altar, and y'all don't want to know what I was out there doing, but I was trembling, like, Lord, please don't let me get struck down by fire, because I've been out there doing God knows what. And I went up there and got prayer, and one of the ministers was like, you sound like your mother. And I said, no, I don't. Do you know who my mother is? My mother is this evangelist. She go to tent meets, and she has, you know, delivered people, and people been set free and in bondage. She go to people's houses and make sure they're doing okay. I don't sound like her. I can't possibly sound like her. I don't see evangelists nowhere. And the uh, person who's praying for me at the time said, embrace it. And I walked away and I said, no, he don't know what he's talking about. Why did I go up there prayer? Why did that old mother tell me to go up there and get it right? To have somebody tell me something that just didn't make no sense. So look, I know this is what you want. You know, how many of us have been here? I mean, how many can raise their hand and, you know, apostle might come up to you. Your friends might come up to you and be like, man, there's something different about you. You know, you would be a good preacher. You know, I used to get that all the time, too, before I accepted the call. I used to get that all the time. Like, you would be a good preacher. But really? We at the club. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I wait to hear my songs. I'm going to go back out there. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about I'm a good preacher. The strength that we like to put on. Right. A promise from God is a promise is a promise. Yes. No, I won't let go, no No matter what comes or goes My faith is strong in you And my heart is focused on the goal Yeah, sometimes I may fall down, but Somehow find a way to pick me up You said that you'd never leave me And you promised to never forsake me So I'm standing on your word oh, oh, oh. It's the only thing I have
go back and I started getting in my word. And I did not know why. I was like, Lord, what is going on? I want to be out here in the world. But God was like, you in the thirsty world. And, but you can't be going to a dry church. So you got to make sure the church has springing up wells uh-huh. so that you're getting what you need so you don't keep going back out to that thirsty world. You get back in the church for real. For real. For real. Let it all go. Let it all out. I, you know, this world ain't for me. I'd be partying. I'd be at the club and I'd stand out like a sore thumb. Like, what are you doing here? You know, we know who your parents are. We know who your grandmother is. What are you doing here? This ain't for you. And I was staring out and I was, I was trying to do things. And, and then I, I had a very traumatic experience happen in my life. And I was like, Lord, okay. I, I, I got the warning sign. Okay, I'm going back to the church. That's what happened to this woman. The promise that God had given her died right before her eyes. My God. Can you imagine that? cannot steer away from the promise. If this is what God had promised me when I was 19 years old, it was going to happen. Right. It was going to happen. However, sometimes it happens and then things don't go the way you think that they should go. Like with the Shumite woman, her son died right before her eyes. And the other thing about that is the son died in front of everybody. You know, everybody who was skeptical about her getting that promise anyway. Because, you know, once the prophet of God came and told her, like, you're going to have a son, she went to her girlfriend, like, girl, do you know what this man told me? And then she went to her husband, like, you know what this man told me? Went to her handmaid, you know what this man told me? She told everybody she knew that this was the promise that God gave her. And then she got the promise. So I'm pretty sure her girlfriend was like, hey, you got it. Hey, you got it, girl. Amen, you got it. And then when the sign got set, even her husband was like, I don't know what's going on here. Take him back to his mother. Because that was, you know, the promise was made to her. So take her back, take him back to his mother. Took him back to the mother to watch him die. And everybody else is sitting there watching him die. How many of us have been there? Been in the church. We know what our calling is. We know what our gifts are. We know what we're supposed to do for the Lord. The Lord has spoken it clearly to us. Whether it be through his messenger, through his word, through prayer. He has told us what it is that we're supposed to do. And then when we finally almost get to the promise, we sit there and watch it die. All my hard work, everything that I've been doing, on the right track. Yes, it was a mistake, but I'm like, okay, well, Lord, then maybe you're where you weren't supposed to be no evangelist. If I have to sit back down and start all over and go back from square one, maybe it wasn't what God wanted me to have. Maybe this ain't the call for me. Maybe I'm just supposed to evangelize from the pews. You know, sit here. I, I vision myself sitting on the pew being a pew woman and be like, you know, God is talking to you. <laughs> He has everything in store for you. Yes, yes. And just do it from the pews. How many know if God gives you a promise, you have to hold
hold on to that promise. Yes, come on. My Even when all the naysayers say, look at her. Mm-hmm. Look at her. She thought she was going to be this and she thought she was going to be that. Uh -huh. <laughs> even in the church, y'all. Even uh -huh. in the church. Yeah. Forget the outside world. Even uh -huh. in the church. The outside world is already naysaying against us as it is. Right. Right. As it is. They're like, it's too hard to be saved. You can't do all that and still be saved and still be living for the Lord. Then when you get in the church and you start living for the Lord, then you trip up a bit. It's the saints to be like, mm -hmm. she need to sit down for a few minutes. But how about still speaking to the promise that God has given people? How about still speaking to the promise like, yes, it looks like this, but God has promised life. Yeah. On the other side of this, God has promised life. Yeah. Resilience this woman had. She was an old woman and got a promise from God and saw her son die. She was like, you know what? Wait a minute. I know this ain't the Come end. On. I know I this is not what God no. said. No. I'm going to go to the man of God no. and I'm going to say, let me tell you something. No. Something happened. No. My son died. The one you promised me, the one that no one thought that I could ever have, he died. And I got to see if this is God's will, who is the author and finisher of our faith. If this is what he said is going to be in, and that's what it is. I'm going to have to accept it. I could have accepted it if it never came, but I'm going to accept it. And the prophet was like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. He was like, what happened? He said, what happened? He said, because God didn't reveal it to me. I mean, it says it in the scripture. He said, God didn't reveal this to me. He said, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The promise died. Some of us need to get around folks who when they see your promise going astray, that's going to come back to you. And be like, have you checked it with the word? Have you checked it with God? Have you figured it out with the Come on. Come on. You walk through the house. You know how you walk through this house and be like, come on, stir it up, y'all. Come on, stir it up. Stir it up to get. God is up to something. I just can't tell, but God is up to something. So guess what? I need to say to be on the wall, be in place, standing up worshiping and giving him the praise. And the boy woke up. Can you imagine what it was? Cause it didn't say the house was empty, it didn't say the house was full. You know, Gehazi and the Shemite woman was there. We know they were there. To have him open that door and be like, the promise leaves. <laughs> I don't know what you thought, I don't know what anybody else thought, but the Woo! promise leaves. I dare anybody to doubt my God. Because the promise lives. God breathed life back into the yeah. promise. God breathed life back into yeah. it. When it seemed like it was dead, God came in and was like, Whoa. Yeah. and just used Elijah as a vessel. How many of us are in place to either be an Elijah to help breathe life into people's promises? Or how many people are here today need life blown back into their promise? We have seen it just go away. I have seen people just fall away. And I'm crying out to God because I know if it hurts God, it hurts me. It hurts my heart to see people walk away from their promises. It hurts my heart to see people not live up to their potential. But how many of us will be like Elisha and go to them and be like, baby, the promise is too important. There are too many people tied to you. There are too many
somebody who has the Elisha spirit yeah. in them that will say, mm -mm, no, come on. I know it didn't turn out the way how you thought it would. I know it hasn't been all roses. I know sometimes it just looked like that thing is dead. But I promise you, I promise you, if you keep on keeping on, you're going to see to the end. You're going to endure and reap the hearts of the promise. All that is a part of the promises of God. So, saints of God, all I ask is that we continue to stay in place. That we continue to be on the walls. Whenever we see anyone slipping and sliding and it don't seem like it's going to come to fruition, pray and be like, Lord, what is going on? Because they have a promise on their life. They, some people have maybe revealed to you a promise that God has told them and you see them slipping and sliding. Go to them and be like, mm -mm. Come on, baby, get it right. Like, like, the, like the lady said to me, get it right. I think we need to go back to that. Get it right. Because when we hear people talk about the old mothers and, and this and that, we always think like, oh, they're going to come and tell us what we did last night. No. If I'm telling you to get it right, that's just it. Get it right. Get it right. That's the truth. Get it right. Get it right. That's all we need to do. We need to get back to that. We need to get back to the to the basics. Because God said, I have reclaimed this ground. I have reclaimed OPM and the people that dwell therein. When they go to and fro, they will be able to reclaim their loved ones. They will be able to reclaim their dreams. They will be able to reclaim what it is that God told them to do. They were able to reclaim family members. I am trusting and believing God that as long as I live out this promise, 